also have mass spec on test three. Mass spec was introduced yesterday in lab, and we'll do that today also during lab. We'll meet right here. Hopefully, this room will be available. 2.30 today. Any questions about lab today or tomorrow? Tomorrow and Thursday, we're doing TLC lab. Video on TLC? No, there's no video on that aspect. <coughs> Done in class. Would you prefer a video? No. Uh, residents, let's see where we left off at on residents. <coughs> Some neutral molecules. Lone pair is a great place to start if the lone pair is in a P orbit. Then you systematically you can move and draw your resonance structures, and then you can assess. And you can look at the delocalization of the lone pair. The more it's delocalized, the less reactive it's going to be. Okay. We can also delocalize pi bonds. Now we tried to do this on the very first thing, but I told you that because there wasn't any polarity there, it wasn't intuitive. Look at this pi bond. Are we going to move electrons uh, towards carbon or towards oxygen? Towards oxygen is more electronegative. That makes sense. It wants the electrons more. <coughs> here you have some intuition, and you can polarize the pi bond. Polarization of pi bonds. So we can take these two electrons in the pi bond, which are polarizable. Okay, here's a pi bond. Okay, the pi bonds, well, there's a sigma, let's forget about it. The pi bond part, very polarizable because the electrons aren't held tight, so the oxygen can pull them more than it can the sigma bond. <coughs> That's what it means to be polarizable. So what if the oxygen just pulled the pi bond up? Well, that'd be a resonance structure because what we would draw here is. We just move the electrons up on the oxygen, two lone pairs here, and this means we're moving the pi bond up to become a third lone pair. Well, what about charges? That's negative. Anything else? One of the golden rules. This is net neutral. Well, that better be net neutral. Yes, that's a now uh, like a carbocation. It only has three bonds. So this is polarization of the pi bond, but we have an intuitive direction of this polarization. You would never move it the other way. And put anion here, leave carb oxygen positive. That's against electronegativity. You would also be leaving the oxygen with no octet. And we said that, remember these guys over here? Never leave them without an octet. They'll get very mad. Halogen and oxygen. The only thing that's okay with no octet is really carbon. Carbocations all the time with no octet. Not an oxygen or halogen or nitrogen. Usually. Okay? There we go. Um, we'll do the other way. You never want to do the other way. We'll show it. 
What if we take these electrons and move them here? What would that give? Well, on the board, it would give yes. Now we put a lone pair here, and we make the oxygen. I mean, two lone pairs here. Don't draw three there. Where did the third one come from? It doesn't come from any error movement. That's a plus charge. The worst thing is no octet. This oxygen will hunt you down and make you pay for this. Don't do that. Poor resonance structure. Yes, it is theoretically a resonance structure. But it's just very bad. We don't want to go that way. Okay, show all possible resonance structures of the above cation. This one here. How many resonance structures of this one can you draw? That is, if this is one, how many additional? How many were you able to draw? How many? Just one additional? One resonance structure of that structure? Yeah, did anybody get more than one? The answer is only one. The only one is. These electrons move in here. Resonance arrow. So we'll bond to F. Two long pairs plus charge on F. Did someone get another one? What other one did you get? Why? Well, I was wondering, could you move the electrons up to the oxygen and then move that? Is that okay? What do you mean, move? Like you did in make, make it anion on the oxygen and then move the pi bond from there. Okay, so you want to show, just I'll, move these up. Yeah, move those I won't up. do the arrows, but move it up. Yeah. And keep the double bond with the F. And keep the double bond with the F. Hold on. You want to move these up to this? Yeah. Okay, we do need to clarify this statement here. And the, and the plus here? Okay. Okay. That is a resonance structure. Now, usually my questions will say this. Usually they'll say that involved delocalization of the cation or something. When we drew this, did we delocalize this cation? No. No. Yes, that's a resonance structure, but it just involves polarization of that. Uh, so I didn't say anything about that, but yes. Now, how good is this? Now we're starting to create more charge, but it is directly a resonance structure. So all possible resonance structures above, of the above cation that involve delocalization of the charge. How about that? <laughs> Now, if that's the direction, would you show this? No. No. The original charge has not been delocalized. Now, what I was wondering if anybody did is do the old windshield wiper and move this down. That's A. If this is B, what do you get? No longer charge, but this is positive, and this is what? No octet. Very bad. We just said that up there. No, don't do that. Very bad. If this was an alkene, yes, because you can leave a carbon plus. Don't, I mean, a carbon with, okay, more than plus. It's no octet. Carbon plus with no octet is okay. Oxygen plus with no octet, bad. Nitrogen, bad. Halogen, bad. So this is the one I really want. Don't do that. Don't let your wiper that down. <coughs> this we discussed. 
Of the two, these are the, these are the two that really only want to draw that involve delocalization of the charge. Or that's the additional one. Of these two here, which one's major? The two on the board, which one's major? That is, if you, could, if you were asked to draw the hybrid or look at the hybrid, the hybrid would look more like which one? Yes, why? More bonds. And every atom has an octet, including the fluorine. Here, carbon doesn't have an octet. Fluorine doesn't mind sharing its electrons as long as it keeps, it keeps an octet. Two, four, six, eight. Okay, effect on acidity. We sort of mentioned this yesterday with the phenol. PKA of these OH compounds, <laughs> regular alcohol. Okay. Huge difference between these rings. This is an aromatic ring. This is saturated, not aromatic. Aromatic means there's P orbitals all the way around. Regular alcohol, this is a phenol. Phenols are much more acidic than regular alcohol. Why? Because the resulting anion is resonance stabilized. We drew those resonance structures last time. <coughs> There's no resonance for this anion. It's a localized anion on the oxygen. This, this anion is delocalized onto other atoms. Then we have this functional group in carboxylic acid. It's even more acidic than a phenol. Carboxylic acid. Which implies that that is more stable than that. That's what that implies. Yeah? Why? Why is the one on the right more stable? You can do resonance of both. Can you delocalize this charge? Again, my pi bonds are not always in there very precisely. Boom, boom, boom. Here, out. Okay, we did that. Does this have resonance? Yes. <laughs> uh, we got an anion with long pairs. That's a great place to focus in on. How do you stabilize an anion? Move electrons away. Yeah. Move electrons away and move these up. You will in out. And what do we have? We have what the arrows tell us we have. And that's now a minus and that's neutral. It's also a resonance. Both of these have resonance. Which one has more resonance? One square over two. <coughs> no. Answer the question. Which one has more resonance? Well, we drew these last time and we drew three additional. Four total, two total there. More resonance meaning more resonance structure. Yeah, the one on the left has more resonance. So it sounds like it should be more stable, maybe, more delocalized. But is that what the data tells us? That was more stable. Now, why is it more stable? It's more stable spread over two oxygens. Because the charge is spread over two <coughs> oxygens. The charge is delocalized to another oxygen. What does the hybrid look like? It's a perfect blend. Because this is it. Single bond, double bond. What's, what's in between? Bond and a half. S single bond, double bond. What's in between? Bond and a half. Partial minus, partial minus. Okay, there's your hybrid. If you can look at this, you've got, you've got the same amount of charge on each oxygen. Neither charge, neither oxygen has a total minus. It only has a partial minus. Yes, the charge is spread over two oxygens. Even though this has more resonance, we drew it last time again. But when we move the charge here, we move it onto what? Carbon. So it's a little counterintuitive. Usually more resonance is good, but sometimes it depends on, well, did you delocalize onto carbon or oxygen? So even though we put it on three different carbons, that's apparently better because we know the data, we know the values.
But this is better than this because at least we can delocalize it onto carbons. Where here you can't delocalize it anywhere. It's just a single oxygen holding all the charge. Okay, which is most acidic? Well, resonance structure. And when we do an acid, you just typically, we, what do we say? You want to look at the conjugate base. So you want to look at the anions and say which is more stable. Well, the answer is going to come from resonance. And the more you can delocalize the, uh, the anion, the charge, now if this wasn't here, you would de delocalize the same. And it would be the same answer. So obviously the, the difference comes from, well, in one of these, you'll be able to delocalize the charge into this nitro group. And in one of them, you will not be. The one that's going to be more, the anion that will be more stable is the one that you can delocalize into the nitro group. Now the nitro is going to be seen in organic two. Lewis structure for nitro is typically one double bonded to oxygen and one single bonded to oxygen. With this being three lone pairs on a minus. Now the nitro is a net neutral group. There's a minus, so that means there's going to be a plus somewhere. What's plus? Nitrogen's <coughs> plus. There's your typical Lewis structure for nitro. You can't draw it without charges. But it's net neutral. So, you, so sit down, draw this out, do resonance structures, and see which one can you do resonance into the nitro. Then answer the question. Effects on basicity. We we'll focus on nitrogen. We sort of, hopefully, are already been able to answer this because we gave a summary statement when we did acid base. Ah, uh, explain trend. What do we got? PKAs. Okay. What does this mean? Well, that's that, the answer is given there. Not basic. PKAs are given. That means these are going to be basic because first off, what does the PKA refer to? The conjugate acid. After these act as bases, I'm telling you, this is non-basic. So first off, why is that one non-basic? Nitrogen. Why is that nitrogen non-basic? We said this two weeks ago. Oh, it's in, it's, it's in conjugation. <coughs> this LP is in what type of orbital? P orbital. P, P, it's in a P orbital. Thank you. Yes, P orbital. And what did we say two weeks ago about lone pairs in P orbitals? They're not going to be basic. Because they're busy doing what? They're busy conjugating. Resonance. They're not interested in protons. I told you there'd be an ex kind of an exception to that. And here we go. Here's an exception. Uh, two weeks ago, which one would you said was of these two is more basic? Two weeks ago. Which one's more basic? <coughs> what type of orbital is this long pair in? Yes, same thing. P orbital. How about this one? SP3. So, not basic, basic. Okay. This is kind of an exception. I labeled that clearly as not basic. This guy actually has a wee bit of basicity. Which one's more basic based on PKAs? Yeah, you should know that. This is more basic. Because the conjugate acid is less acidic. More basic. This is less basic. Less basic than this. But it's more basic than that. It still has some basicity, even though it's in a P orbital. Why? Very similar to up there. When we start doing resonance, we move the lone pair to what type of atom? We did these resonance structures. We do resonance. You can draw it wherever you want on your paper, okay? I'm coming this way. Uh, we do resonance. And we start putting the charge onto carbon. This is a resonance structure. But how much does this contribute? 
does carbon like taking on the minus? structure, it doesn't contribute much to the, to the hybrid. That is, yes, the kid came from mom and dad, but it looks mostly like mom. Dad only contributed a wee little bit to the appearance of the child. Okay? Because of that, it's not a perfect delocalization. Okay? That is, what I just said, it looks more like what? It looks more like this. That is, the, the electrons are more there on the nitrogen instead of spread out. And if they're more on the nitrogen, it can act as a base. Now, they did spread out some. Okay, so the reason we did, two weeks ago, I would have accepted, hey, non-basic. It's got a little bit of basicity because it, it's not spread out a lot. How about this guy? Why is it non-basic, even though they're both in pure ones? Because when you spread it out, what do we put the the long pair on. You put it on oxygen. That's a much greater contributor. So the electrons are, are really moved onto the oxygen more. And so they're less there. But here they're not moved away from it because you're, it's carbon. So kind of an exception. P orbital, but slightly basic. Now this guy is considered a good base. What do we say good bases were? SP3 nitrogens? SP2 decent, but not P. Those are both P, weak base, sp3. Why? Is this long pair delocalized? Is it moved on to other atoms of our resonance? No, there is no resonance. That long pair is sitting right there on that nitrogen. High electron density on the nitrogen, it's going to act as a good base. No resonance. There's no P orbital here. There's no conjugation. There's no resonance. So that's the explanation of the trend. If you look at the PKA list in the back of your lab manual, I give PKAs and then I give explanations. Which nitrogen is most basic? Same idea as the ones like above. Okay, there's, there's at least three there to be drawn resonance structures and answering questions. We'll see how you did on those tomorrow. The more you can delocalize the lone pair, the less basic it's going to be. But the less electron density it will have. Resonance of radicals. You can do resonance of radicals. Uh, I don't want to do any right now. Um, at the very end of the course, we'll look at some radical and we'll probably do resonance <coughs> then. Golden rules of resonance. Charlie Brown. Yes. So, please be doing, working on getting more and more comfortable with resonance. It's really important. When you get to organic two, you're just going to say it's resonance. And you're going to say you should only that organic one. So let's work on it. So when we get to organic two, we'll be ready to go. <coughs> What type of compound? Like the ones that we were looking at. So, like which whichever one has more resonance, that would make it more stable, right? Uh, you're kind of mixing some terms. I have these specific compounds. Are you talking about an acid or a base? I guess I'm talking about the bottom compound. So it says which is more basic. The bottom compounds are. Uh, most likely to be bases with the amine there. Which nitrogen is the most basic? So why did you ask about something being acidic? Well, I guess, like, if it's more stable, it's more acidic. So that would make it less no, stable. No, I don't agree with that statement. More stable? More stable in what way? Um, like more resonance? I have to see an example. Okay. Uh, 
terminology is not that precise. You mean you mean more stable in terms of that's a very broad term, more stable. Are you talking about the conjugate base of the acid being more stable? I don't know. It's well, fine. Uh, that's that's the way we did it when we did acid base. Ask me again. We need to kind of clarify the language so you can so you can hone in on the the important things. Uh, trinitrophenol, very acidic. So are you saying that's because it's very stable? Trinitrophenol, very acidic. It'll also explode in your face. So it's not that it's not that stable. That's why it blows up. It's not that stable, but it's very acidic. So that sounds like it contradicted your initial statement. Trinitrophenol is very similar to trinitrotoluene, TNT. It's dynamite. <laughs> okay. Uh, alkene reactions. I'm sorry, diene reactions. <laughs> diene. Diene. Alkenes times two. Diene. You've all heard the joke about how you're dying to cover this hand up here. Okay. Okay, there's more of my questions there. Amphotericin. That's a big compound. Uh, dienes, okay. Top compound over there. Uh, two enes, a diene. Uh, reactive with HBr, cold, you get one product. Hot, you get another product. Um, Dill's alder reaction. Uh, we're we're going to do TLC and not the Dill's alder reaction. TLC is going to be, I think, more <coughs> uh, useful for you. Uh, below. These are polyenes. A polyene has multiple enes. One, two, three, four, five. And that's not an e that's not an alkene, so it's okay. It's called a polyene. Accutane, use the treat. Uh, acne. Amphotericin B. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven ene. Just call it a polyene once it gets above like three or four. You know, you can call them a triene, a tetraene. You can just call them the polyenes. Are all seven conjugated? Yes. That is, it, is it all just a series of p orbitals, or is there a break in the chain? It's all a series of p orbitals. It's all seven alkenes, all conjugated, all lined up there. Uh, so there's some introductory questions. Conjugated, non-conjugated, and accumulated. We already covered that on the other hand, though. And the question I just asked you alluded to that. Nomenclature. Let's do it here. Just twice the fun. Don't forget your EZ. Name this compound. Longest continuous chain. Seven. Help. Right? Help. If it was one ene, it'd be heptene. It's called a heptadiene. You do that on the end. What if there were three double bonds in the hept? <laughs> Heptatriene. Make sense? Okay. Uh, that's heptadiene. But if that's heptadiene, what's the next one? Wait, do you have to put numbers of where the bonds are? Two and four. Two, four. Yeah, we, we need that. So let's do that. Yeah, because <laughs> the double bonds could be maybe here and here. No. Uh, where are the double bonds? Two, four. Yes, two, four. Mm -hmm. Lowest numbers to your alkenes, and you quote the first number of the positioning. Mm -hmm. Two, four. Two, comma, four. Have to die. Now it looks a little better. 
So if that's that, what is the next one? Do you see what I'm getting at? What is this? It's the same thing. That's because we have forgot to, we need stair chemistry here. But what's the difference in the two? One of the alkenes is shown in a different <coughs> stereochemical uh, configuration. Uh, what is the configuration of each of these double bonds? The first one being the two, what is it? E or Z? E. E? E. E, the first one. What's the second one? E. E comma E. With the first E being the two and the second E being the four. Is there both E because you just put one E and the other E? No, I typically you want to put both. You just put one and somebody's going to ask you, what about the other one? Or which one are you referring to? So it's like this. So what's the, what's the second compound? Z. Z comma E. Same exact name. Those two compounds are stereoisomers. Same exact name, they just differ by what? Stereochemical descriptors. Everybody seen that? Yeah? We're building on our alkene nomenclature, EZ. <coughs> just taking it now to uh, dienes. Okay, name the one on the end there. How do we do? Uh, e, correct. Chlorine beats H. Same, same. Here's your difference. This carbon's attached to HHH, this carbon's attached to CCH. So this wins out, and their opposite E. This alkene is not stereogenic. So the E obviously refers to the one that is stereogenic. Terpenes and terpenoids. Have you ever, ever heard of this in terms of like biology? Mm -hmm. Any turtles? Any talk about like particularly plant biology? <laughs> no? Turpenes. No, it's not turtles. <laughs> Terrapins? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Terpenes. Oh. Hey, okay. A, ter a terpene is a natural product out there, maybe found in turtles or mushrooms or, or, or places, okay? Um, 
It comes from uh, isoprene. This is isoprene. Now, if you named isoprene, isoprene's a common name. If you named it like we just named it, it would be this. No stair chemical descriptors required. <coughs> Neither alkene stereogenic, right? Ah, uh, that's the name. Known as isoprene. Here's your formula: two degrees of unsaturation. So instead of C5H12, it's only C5H8. Um, but this is a common building block in the plant kingdom for building complex molecules. For example, lemons. Squeeze the lemon on your on your uh, rainbow trout. <laughs> I thought you were going to say sandwich. It's all about the You went to trout. That threw me off. Okay. Lemon. Well, lemon contains limonene. It's a compound. You can actually extract it from lemons and distill it. Be a nice lab. Distill Yeah? Okay. The formula. It's double that. Because it's made by this coming together and dimerizing. All these are multiples of C5H8. Well, not all of them. But times four would be 20 and 32. Taxidiene, that's a pretty complicated little structure there. How does a plant, how do, these come from plants. How do plants make these? Miraculous, yeah. These are all, because they come from isoprene, they, they're known as terpenes. Where did that name come from? Maybe turpentine? I don't know. Turpentine is, a, turpentine is a terpene. Eventually it comes from this. It's probably got a formula that is a multiple of that. What's a terpenoid? What's a humanoid? Is a humanoid a human? It's like. So you also have compounds that are terpene-like, called terpenoids. They don't have the exact multiples of this formula. For example, menthol. Menthol's actually got an oxygen in it. And it's not exactly a multiple. But it, the plant still makes it from this. But at some point it, it diverges away and it brings in probably water or something. So it's not exactly a terpene, but it's close, and so it's called a... It's not exactly a human, but it's close. It's called a humanoid. Terpenoid. Okay. Beta carotene. How does the carrot make beta carotene? Well, it begins with, and then it's miraculous from there. Okay. Beta carotene. Is that a multiple of that? Uh, eight. Eight times eight is. What's eight times eight? I didn't memorize that. Fifty-six. <laughs> Oh, okay. Let's see, it, it's not exactly a multiple, so it's not exactly a terpene, but it's terpenoid. At some point, it sort of lost a little something as it started dimerizing it off. Okay. You can often identify these because they often have methyl groups coming off of the, of some of the methyls. Tell these methyls coming off. Uh, and that methyl there, it, it just ends up, okay. When you hear that biology, then... Uh, Pay attention. Uh, the U-tree, uh, you know, retinol, uh, Taxol, drug for breast cancer, comes from the U-tree. No, taxol is not up here. Taxidiene, that's not exactly Taxol, but that's just something that comes from the U-tree. The Taxol is ultimately made from, there it is considered a terpenoid, I'm pretty sure. Okay, chemistry. Um, we're about out of time. Two different types of general reactions for dyes. We'll have one, two additions and one, four additions. When you have a conjugated dyne, conjugated. If, if, if they're not conjugated, it's just pr pretty much like two separate alkenes. Chemistry of conjugate. One, two addition, that's what we've been doing for 10 days now, week. One, two addition. And if you look at this mechanism, you can do it. It's just like what we've been doing. HBr adding to this alkene here, and we didn't do anything there. 
Uh, I don't want to get in, I just will go into overview mode here. But then we'll look at 1-4 addition. This is called conjugate addition. We can go ahead and say, why is it 1-2? Where's the new H here at? We added HBR, where's the new H? Uh, the end. Yes, it's on the end. Please do this mechanism. It's very basic, hopefully, by now. And so if the, if the H is here on the one carbon, that's not nomenclature. That's just, that's just where the H is. Call that the one carbon. Where's the bromine at? The two. So that's why it's called a one, two addition. Look at down below. Where's the new H? Two on the end, three there. So there must be a new H there. And that's the only place there's a new H. You've got to evaluate your, what happened here. So if we call that one, what, what carbon is the bromine on? Four. Four. Although well, one four addition. This was direct up here. Direct. Usually the standard old, what we've been doing is direct. How do you get this outcome? Try the mechanism. Do both me mechanisms. Down here, you might want to consider resonance. <laughs> Draw a resonance structure. OK? We do those. We work on a resonance handout problem. Some of you this afternoon right here at 2.30. Awesome. Have a good day, guys. Yeah. I'm not sure. I'll still watch this one.